After having enjoyed Persona 5, I decided that I wanted to play its predecessors because I thought I would enjoy them. I went in backwards and began with the best version of Persona 4 out there, being Persona 4 Golden. When I was researching which version to play, there was a clear consensus from the people online that Golden was the best way to go. With it also being hailed as the only reason to get a Vita, I was admittedly curious. I picked up a used Vita and copy of Persona 4 Golden, and for the next two weeks, it was my go-to single-player game. I didn't enjoy it as much as I did Persona 5, but that by no means is me saying that I didn't like it. It was a fantastic game, but there were a few things that I think P5 did better, allowing for a more enjoyable experience. That said, I still think P4 has a more engaging story and much better chemistry between its characters, so I can perfectly understand this being a lot of people's favorite Persona game. Then there's Persona 3. As I did with P4, I researched which version I should play, and I found that while there was a version that was more recommended, there was a bigger split in this debate. It was unanimous that Persona 3 Fest was an objective improvement from the original, but the issue appears with Persona 3 Portable for the PlayStation Portable. P3P was the newest version of the game, but because it was on inferior hardware to the PS2, which both 3 and 3 Fest were on, some cuts had to be made. Some major cuts. Instead of being the 3D world that you immerse yourself in over the course of a year in in-game time, Persona 3 Portable plays more like a visual novel in which you use a cursor to move around a 2D space and talk to 2D sprites. Except for when you're in Tartarus, the tower which you climb over the course of the game. Now while that sounds like a big downgrade from its older counterparts, P3P does have a good amount of upgrades from Fest that make it worth playing as well, such as, most notably, the ability to play as a female character, which brings with it two social links that the two original versions didn't have. This version also makes the game function mechanically more like Persona 4, as it was released after the original P4's release on the PS2. For most players, however, these upgrades were not enough to call the definitive version of Persona 3, which leaves the issue that I wanted to talk about in this video. Persona 3 is a fantastic game with an interesting cast of characters and a darker story that deals with the concepts of death and the value of life in very meaningful ways. Now that the original game is 13 years old, and Persona is at a high point in its lifetime as a series due to the success of Persona 5, a remake of this game would definitely be worth Atlas's time. I can also say with high confidence that I know it would sell, and this should get Atlas's attention, given how they obviously love money. But what would a remake entail? Would they remake Fess? Would they remake Portable? I think the ideal Persona 3 would take the best aspects of each and put it into one game. Because now that the hardware is not a limitation, Atlas can focus on making the best game they can without having to give up large parts of the game that fans have come to love. To begin, there is the question of any alterations to the story. While we have seen that Persona 5 The Royal seems to have reworked the story so a new character can fit in, Without adding another character to P3's original story, there shouldn't be any need to change it. Although, they could take the route of a character like Marie in P4G and make the new character work around the story instead of the story working around them. But this doesn't need to be the case, as P3 has a solid story and set of characters, and I see no reason to add any new party members. Then there's the question of the answer from Fess. Despite the answer's unpopularity within the community for how it handles the characters in a way that ruins them, not including something as large as a 30-hour postgame would take away from this game being the definitive edition. While I doubt making too many changes to the story would be possible or even practical, without making it into something completely different, it being included with the game as a separate game mode as it was in Fess would be the best way to go. Although, if there were a way to transfer progress from your party members from the main game to the answer, that would be... something? In short, the plot is fine and has no need for any changes. One of the biggest updates to the game would be a visual revamp. Its successor, Persona 5, is widely praised for its fantastic UI, and one of the first places to start would be with an update to P3's UI, but still maintaining the game's original style. I had seen a few really cool mockups on Reddit a while ago, and I can't seem to find them for the life of me, but if they prove anything, it's that Persona 3 could look really nice in a more modern style while still maintaining its aesthetic. The models from P3D look fantastic, but as they are too high poly to be used throughout most of the game, new models will likely have to be added. Speaking of P3D, We've seen that GeckoCon has already been modeled and contrary to the characters, I think that, other than the need for it to be completed, the school's already well modeled, which minimizes the amount of extra work necessary there. Same with the dorm as well. The textures of the game, of course, would also receive a graphical overhaul. Something that I would personally really want from a remake is for the animated cutscenes to be reanimated in the style of the Persona 3 movies. They look really clean and I think they would fit really well in the game. A few cutscenes could also be added in other areas of the game that aren't as plot-heavy, like the beach trip or festival in P5 or the scooter scene in P4. Really anything that would add more to the chemistry of the cast. 
Adding to the remade cutscenes would be the openings. Remade versions of Burn My Dread and Soul Phrase would be really cool, along with an updated version of the FES opening as well. Perhaps, as is the theme for newer versions of Persona games, a new opening could be added as well. I would be very curious to see how a song in Persona 3 style would be created 13 years after the game's initial release, but I have faith in Shoji Meguro. He could definitely figure something out. After having played Persona 4 and 5, I was shocked to see how primitive the social link system in Persona 3 felt as compared to its successors. A much needed change would be to make it so that every guy or girl you start a social link with isn't romantic by default, because that was a massive nuisance when I was playing Fess. I'm not entirely opposed to keeping the ability to make social links reverse when you make a choice that isn't as respectful towards someone as it does add an element of realism to the game, but the romance options most definitely need to be reworked. Another major rework that needs to come back from Portable is that the male members of your party can also be social links. Playing Fess, I found it to be the most baffling thing that I could not just go get some ramen with Junpei or Akihiko. Instead, I could only have social links with the female members of my team, and various people around the school and accompanying areas. This includes Kenji, the most insufferable person in Persona 3. His entire social link has to do with him wanting to go out with a teacher and it blowing up in his face, not to mention that all you really do is listen to him drone on and on about his delusions from the beginning, obviously having no base in reality. While I don't like him and would much rather have Junpei as a magician social link, I can't help but feel that getting rid of some of the original social links in order to make room for your male party members might make you lose some of the original experience of the game. That said, not having such major characters as social links is very odd, and while I can keep going back and forth on this issue, I prefer a world with Junpei instead of one with Ken. One thing that should be added to the social link system is something that was done in Persona 5. For everyone you formed a bond with, as you progressed your relationship with them, you would gain perks relating to how that person would be aiding the cause of the Phantom Thieves, as it would be be it gaining new tactics from Hifumi, a shogi player, or learning how to convince shadows to side with you, from Tyrannosuke, a politician. Adding these perks to the social links in P3 would give more of an incentive to talk to people that you may have not cared for at all before, and make Kenji bearable if he is not eviscerated from the game. There are a few game mechanics that Persona 3 had that either have evolved in past games or simply don't exist, and some of these should be brought back in a definitive edition. Having the option of a female protagonist was one of the biggest draws to Portable, as it was the original story with some changes that made the game feel different when compared to the male protagonist. A definitive edition of Persona 3 would be woefully incomplete without this alternate storyline and a few new changes that could be added to make it even more different and enticing to play, so that the male and female protags can have as diverse of an experience as possible while still being the protagonist of the same story. Getting tired was a mechanic in Persona 3 that I did not like at first, as it was not present in Persona 4 and beyond. However, as I played P3 more and more, it grew on me, and removing it would take away from the experience of the daily struggles you have to plan around, as it is one of the biggest limiting factors in how you're able to spend your time, and how you're able to progress at a certain period of time. I also originally thought that the possibility of getting tired from studying at night was a terrible mechanic that should not be a part of a definitive edition. However, I think that because it is a use of time late at night in which you would also likely already be tired, makes it reasonable to become exhausted when you're trying to take it further. It also implements a mind game in which you must choose whether or not you want to risk getting tired in order to gain a boost to your knowledge. Relating to this point, while Persona 4 and 5 have 5 social stats in which you level up over the course of the game to bring to a maximum level of 5 each, Persona 3 only has 3 social stats in which you level up to a maximum of 6 each. I believe that the game works just fine built around these 3 social stats, so I don't think that more need to be added, but rather, more parts of the game should be able to reflect how much you have worked on these increasing social stats. Also, as P3's main way of obtaining new personas is through shuffle time, this would return, and new variations of how the cards would move would be added to keep shuffle time from becoming stale, considering how much you will have to encounter it. As the series has progressed, various features have been implemented that have improved the overall experience drastically, and some of these features should come back to bring the streamlined experience to Persona 3. For example, starting at Persona 4, weather was introduced, which added much more variety to when characters were and were not available, as well as giving you an incentive to study by increasing the amount of knowledge you gain when it rains. Something else that having a free rainy afternoon is also good for is reading, and reading is another effective way of grinding social stats that, if implemented, would keep you from the monotony of going to drink coffee or going to karaoke every day. Something else that could be done in a similar vein is more jobs that you could take up to increase your social stats. P3P did that with a coffee shop, where instead of paying for coffee to get one point of charm, you work to gain a salary that increases as your charm and courage go up. If other opportunities like this were given for some of the other areas you have access to, that could solve the issue of having to do the same task every night. Which brings me to my next point. 
In any given version of Persona 3, you can only go to the mall at night or stay in the dorm. In P5, you are eventually given access to everywhere you can go during the day, at night. All that needs to be done is to add more locations that are accessible at night so it isn't as monotonous. Another more minor change would be to make your party members appearances separate from the armor they're wearing like Persona 4 and 5, so you can make them look like one thing and have a defense stat of another. And finally, a more non-essential addition that would make the game feel a little more modern would be something in the vein of the Vox Populi of Persona 4 Golden and the Thieves Guild of Persona 5. I never used it, but I thought it was a neat little feature that could be useful sometimes, and it involved internet connectivity, which is where the modern touch comes from. Maybe it could be added to track things like what songs people listen to in Tartarus or other small statistics like that. And finally, the one thing that I really want to see some renovation in, the reason that I had to take a break from Persona 3, the increasingly dreary tower that you scale over the course of the game, Tartarus. I think it is intriguing in concept, but when you boil it down, all that's really happening is you walk around a floor, looking for stairs, fighting shadows on the way, and you keep doing it over and over again, for 256 floors, quite a few of which you will be forced to go through multiple times to grind out your party in preparation for your monthly missions. The only thing distinguishing each floor from one another is a reskin, different kind of stairs, and a slight alteration to the OSD that only change once every few dozen floors. There really are no new mechanics introduced after the first 10 or 15 floors. The first and foremost change to Tartarus would be to add something more stimulating to do for 256 floors, adding more variation between the extremely limited types of pre-made corridors that are randomly generated each time you enter a floor would aid this issue to an extent. But P3 could take some notes from P5 and add some more detail to Tartarus that is related to the boss that is coming at the end of the month. Take the boss where you spin a wheel to add some effect, negative or positive, to the fight. This mechanic could be implemented into that month's block of Tartarus and add some interesting variety while also giving a preview to the boss, so they don't feel as random at times. Another addition that would be nice is an addition to the songs you can play in Tartarus on your MP3 player. They could take a song from P4 or 5 that could fit Tartarus, or even make one or two new songs if Atlas feels so inclined. A change from P3P that I really did not like was having to pay to heal your party. I disliked it in P4 too, but I always finished each dungeon on the first day so it didn't bother me. Ideally, warping back to the first floor would heal you and replenish your MP, but still have the ability to force tired members out as a way of keeping you from progressing too far in one go, and just to be fair, because insta-healing when you warp back is really useful. In the production of this video, I had the thought that maybe something could be done so that Tartarus is faster than complete. I also thought that this might bring up the issue of being critically unprepared for the story as it progresses, so there's a give and take to this approach, as if you are going to have to grind senselessly anyway, this change does effectively nothing. That said, while I can't think of anything that would make Tartarus faster without compromising something else important, it doesn't need to be made shorter, it just needs to be made less repetitive. Now, this video basically ended up being a list of demands, but my goal was to outline some things that I thought should be included in a definitive version of P3. Persona 3 is a fantastic game already, and this was only speculation on something that may not even happen. I just love the game and wanted to talk about it. I've been working on this script since the beginning of June, and at this point my main goal was to complete this to a satisfactory point so that I could finally work on something else, and I have a very different idea for our next video, it's something I haven't done on this channel yet, but I want to see how it goes. Thank you for watching me through this mess as I try to figure out where I want to go from here and I hope that you'll consider watching one of my other videos, preferably one of my more recent ones as those had more work and thought behind them. My ghost,